I am very delighted to be able to talk to you about how we built an AI startup and some of the lessons that we learned along the way to help maybe save you some of that pain. So firstly, why an AI startup? In 2014, 2015, it was quite buzzy. People were talking about it. And Andy and Alex, my other two co-founders, were at a barbecue geeking out about machine learning and thought, wouldn't it be awesome to build some machine learning solutions within any kind of space? And they had some network within the call center space. So it started in 2016, going out to winter call centers, but it wasn't very fruitful. Call centers are not really interested in AI at the time. They're still digitizing operations. It's just a step too far. And that's when I got involved. We started looking at how we could make it a horizontal platform appealing to more customers, more sectors, and went super broad. And we got investors involved and started getting really some great feedback about how we could iterate the platform. So that's where at now we've built a machine learning automation platform that can build, explain, deploy machine learning models, really reducing the time and the risk for data science teams to build machine learning solutions. And yeah, what I mean from that, like the lesson we learned was really iterate, find your market. You know, it's hard sometimes when you're like really wedded to an idea, but you know, just keep, keep trying, keep iterating and you'll get there in the end. So we went from one extreme call centers to the other horizontal. And one of the things we probably should have done better was niche, niche, niche. It is absolutely crucial at the beginning that you don't try and be everything to everyone because you will get swamped. Now, it nearly killed us. We were talking to pharma one day, telecoms the next, tax the next, and we were trying to learn all the language and try and really get involved in their businesses. And yeah, I will say, you know, if you're thinking about, I want this huge vision, I want to be the next Nike, think about where you can start. You know, can you start with like the over 65s who want sleeves and just yoga apparel and go really, really niche? to build that $1 billion sports apparel brand would be the Nike for the over 65s. But yeah, think about how you can get a bit smaller because being everything is a lot of work. And then survival can come from revenue for sure. And even with investment, you need revenue. Getting early wins is great, but we got some whales and I'm really glad we did. We've got Deloitte, NHS, these really, really big customers. And uh, they have really stuck with us and they've been the foundation of our business for like the past four or five years. So it's great. So like, you know, with the governance time and these enterprise accounts are insane, you know, nine to 12 months to get, you know, you just a pass in the door to get access to some data. It's really, really difficult. And when you're hanging on, you know, cash flow is so tight, it can feel like a really big gamble. But ultimately, it works really well both ways. You treat them amazingly because they're so important to you. They get the best features, they get bespoke support. And then the other side, you get credibility and amazing use cases. And so it really does work as a great foundation. You don't have as much effort and churn later on. So it's a, a lot of time sink at the beginning, but super, super worth it from, the, from then on on. And if you can bootstrap, amazing. They're now the cool kids of Silicon Valley. But for many of us, you will be raising money. And uh, with that, I would say my advice if you're really early stage is to think about going with angels versus VCs, especially for your seed round. The check size is meaningful to a VC, or sorry, to an angel. And that means you'll get a lot more support when times are tough, when you're ringing going, COVID's happened, or, you know, gosh, you know, we're in really um, tough times. They will figure it out for you. They'll help you um, and just be a great support. So, you know, look for them on LinkedIn. They're everywhere now. They hopefully put it in their bio and um, yeah, sell that founder vision. And I'd say for all the females in the room, this is one thing that sometimes we do lack. We can be a lot more realistic and uh, we don't sell the vision like the way some of the males do. So just have in your head, Elon Musk might have gone in the room before you saying, we're going to colonize Mars and they need a billion dollars and they need it tomorrow. And then in 10 months time, I'm going to come back and ask for 10 billion, but don't worry, I've got this. Um, whereas women might be like, you know, there's a huge risk. It's a gamble. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's not what they want to hear. So you just have to be context. Think of the context of which you're playing in the game that's been played. And I would just go sell that vision. And especially angels really get excited by a big, powerful vision because, you know, you their ticket to success potentially and they want to ride that rocket with you. Now, with that network is key and it can be really tough. Now, you guys are already got a head start. You're with your own future world and that's amazing. <laughs> Um, but accelerators, innovation hubs, all of these things are great. And if you find a sector, there's probably an accelerator in there. So think Barclays, Google, Techstars. We found HS2 and they were doing a data analytics one. And that's been brilliant. We could never have got into the construction space without them. So you know, keep looking. And even there, a lot of them have investment arms like Coca-Cola I know has one, Samsung have one. So just keep hunting around and you'll really find some fruitful network within that. And even if you get a no, 
know, you get a lot of great advice from these guys because they're in the thick of the weeds of the consumer and the marketplace and they know so much. So just keep hunting for those. It's really, really great. And then finally, my last point, it is really all about the tortoise versus the hare. We are here so much about grit and determination and resilience. That's all great, but you also need a ton of patience. It is going to take you so much longer than you ever thought possible. Devon, I'm sure, can, is nodding away. This is hard, hard work. It's graft, and it is definitely not as easy. You hear about Facebook and you see all these great things, but they are very, very rare. The rest of us are out there slogging it away. And just be patient, be brave, and I know you'll reap the rewards.